we're going to go ahead and get ourselves started. Thank you so much for joining the LBC. Stephanie, our Zoom session, non-Zoom Zoom session. I should have done this via Zoom. Um, Stephanie, do you have anything you want to say? Um, no. No? Okay. <laughs> Thank you for agreeing to do this. Yeah, absolutely. And for being fun. <laughs> yeah, we're, 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 we, we did our best to try and make it entertaining. So let me tell you a little bit about the format we're going to use today, and then I'll introduce our objective and the agenda of what we're going to cover. Um, so one thing that I really want to say I'm really proud about is that the LITS IT support team and I did this collaboratively. We each took sections, um, put it together. It is mostly a presentation, but you know, if we need to, we don't have, it's funny, we intentionally didn't install Zoom on this machine, so we can show you that if we need to. Um, so we're gonna run through just some basic things that can help you. Um, I wanna say up front that this is meant to help you with what I, what the industry terms just-in-time support. And just-in-time support means, oh my gosh, it's not working right now, I've gotta make it work. We're gonna try to give you tools to help you do that. I want to be explicit in saying that does not mean LITS is not going to support you. We are always here for you. We don't have any problem with last minute running down, emailing us. Um, as long as someone's around, and I want to say Stephen and Ralph are also fantastic. They don't sometimes know the um, products as well because they don't use them as Zoom they do, but you know some of them they don't interact with as well, but they are part of the team. and and wonderful about helping too. So this is not meant to replace LITS. Please don't leave us unemployed. Um, okay, good. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, sometimes it's just easiest for you to go, oh, I remember I can do this. So let me click here. And you, if you support yourself, then you may solve the problem and be the hero that day. If not, we'll send you a drink. Okay. So our objective today is really to help you support yourself with Zoom if you encounter difficulties. So it's, it's kind of giving you some tips to self-support. Our agenda, we're gonna talk about what is within our control and what's outside of our control. Sometimes I see frustrations, and I know the team sees frustrations that we can't do anything about. And so it's kind of that, um, what's that serenity prayer, you know, help you to like keep, whatever, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah control the things I can and let go of the things you can't. Because some of it you truly can't control. And I'm going to tell you up front that a video conferencing, even though it's come a long way, is not as convenient and it's not as um, guaranteed as face-to-face -face meeting. So just kind of remember. We're going to talk about, Andrea's going to talk about setting up a new meeting and some of what the options are with that. Pete's going to cover how to use a sound, I typed that really well, use sound speakers and video devices. Um, Marta's going to talk about sharing screens and applications. We're going to try to give you some good tips um, on how to share in um, what I'll call a safe manner. Um, and then we're going to talk about the web version of Zoom versus the desktop or device version. And we'll end with questions. Okay? It's meant to be kind of a, a little bit of a dive into it just to help you with familiarity. And uh, that's it. So let's talk about what's within <coughs> our control. Because there's a lot that's within our control for Zoom. The first thing, plan ahead. This is, you know, oh, this camp, uh, this uh, organization seems to be pretty good about this. If you can test ahead of time, if you can set things up, double check with people, it removes a lot of frustration. So pre-testing meetings, even to the point of setting up a meeting ahead of time and connecting with the person. If nothing else, if they're off campus, this will make them install the client. And that's a huge help. We'll talk about client versus web. Attending trainings, involving us when you need us. We love when you come to us two months ahead of time and say, I'm going to have a meeting and I need some support. We will have someone sit in the room with you. We have no problem with that. We're here to support you. Um, our local machines are within our control. This is something we can take care of. Your machines are up to date. We just made sure everyone's on Windows 10. Um, we can make sure the client's installed. And again, we're a phone call or ticket away from coming in just pre-making sure everything's in place. The other thing that is within our control is the on-campus network. Now, LITS doesn't support it directly, but University IT does. So again, if you test it and you find that Wi-Fi isn't real good where you're at, meeting, Zoom meetings, especially with video, are always better wired. But 
definitely, I do wireless all the time. Um, but test it. If you have a problem, let us know and we can let University IT or let them know directly. Things that are out of our control. Anything whatsoever on the connection ends device. So we had a leadership team meeting yesterday, I think it was, Tuesday. And we kept getting feedback from the, the, end, the other person's um, end. It was like this chipmunky sound, it was really bad. Um, but that was because she wasn't wearing a headphone. So headphones really help because they isolate the sound and the, and the mic. So yes, you get to look as nerdy as I am, but at the same time, you, uh, you're you gonna separate it so the mic isn't as likely to hear it. We can get you headphones from you. Um, so those sorts of problems you really can't do anything about other than maybe to ask the other person if they have any headphones. Sound and video on their end. Um, I have seen multiple instances, especially where a presenter, this worked out with Tuesday's meeting, but a lot of times when presenters are in hotels, Hotels love to throttle bandwidth because they're supporting 800 rooms and they don't, they don't want to give the full bandwidth. So you'll, if someone's presenting from a hotel room, their sound and video might be terrible. One tip, if your video is bad, or the sound and video is bad, have the person turn off their video if they're using both. Audio is always easier on bandwidth than a video is. So if you have that, and we'll talk about how easy that is to do, you basically just hit mute video in the left corner. Um, so just know that sound is always easier than video. It's funny that in technology, we do a lot of Zoom conferences and Skype calls. Um, I have rarely seen people use video. They just don't. One thing to be aware of is that we can control, or at least the university can control on campus. The second it leaves campus, there's almost no control. And much like a highway, the internet has congestion. And so if there's something major going on, or a storm, or you know, a major part of the backbone of the internet goes down, which does happen, then you have no control over that. And yeah, the other thing, that, yes? Talk about the campus, do you mean the local river campus, or across the river, or on the other side of the cemetery? So, um, to the best of my knowledge, the way the network is segmented, and Stephen, if you know differently than me, the River Campus is kind of its own entity but has a direct connection to the medical center. Anything beyond that, I almost guarantee you that they're using leased fiber, or um, which is basically someone else ran the cable and we borrow it. It's kind of like, what's a good example? It's like renting a boat. It's your boat. You can use it all you want. But, you know, it's somebody else's property. So Brooks Landing and College Town aren't included? I wouldn't include them. I would consider them off-site. <coughs> okay. Most likely we have leased fiber um, so that it's our connection, but still the di distance and those sorts of things. That's partly where, where it's testing it. If you're calling on a regular basis and you always get a good connection, great. But if it's a one-time call, set up a meeting a few days before with the person, you need 15 minutes, you'll use five of it just to you know, bring it up, try to test the connection, you know, see if they can see you, if you can see them. Again, this will sound funny. I recommend you don't use video unless you have to. Um, some of what we're going to show you today, you need video. If you're going to share screens, you know, it's good you're using a video connection. But the second that video is showing you moving, which everybody hates anyway, um, except for maybe Pete and I. And, uh, you know, it's, um, it's just easier on the connection easier on everything. It, it removes a complication to, to not use video. <laughs> Test. This is so important. I'm going to hit this over and over again. The other advantage to setting up a test three or four days ahead of time is we don't have any problem even calling the end user that you're connecting with and walking them through some of it. You know, people off campus, first time I used Zoom, I was working for a school district and it was with a University of Rochester presentation. They were like, download Zoom. I didn't have it on my computer. So, you know, if, if you connect with someone ahead of time and have a problem, one of the four of us can absolutely reach out to them and say, hey, let's install the client. Let's test it again. Use us. Okay, I'm going to pass this off now to our superstar. Uh, this is just uh, setting up a meeting and you're scheduling a meeting for meeting options. Um, oh, 
It's my little, oh yeah, it is. In the home screen, when you start Zoom, you're going to have the four or five little icons. You're going to select the schedule. And then that's going to open the schedule of meeting. In the schedule of meeting are your options. You're going to start with your topic. You're going to enter your name of your meeting. You're going to select your date and time, the duration, how long it's going to be. The time zone is defaulted by whatever your computer time zone is. So for us, it should be Eastern Standard Time. And then reoccurring if you want to a monthly meeting, a weekly meeting, you can set that up here too. Next are your video and audio settings. Now these are the settings for when someone enters into your meeting. These are not the same setup that Pete is going to explain to you in a little bit. So you are allowed to turn the camera on or off for when the host joins as well as when the participants join. So can I interject real quickly? So when you correct the schedule meeting from the four icons in the application, which we'll show you that in a second, um, I would almost always do both, especially with remote connections, because if they call from their phone, sometimes if you have a computer issue, they can call from their phone and at least have audio. Realize you lose some of the screen sharing and other things if they call in. Um, I would turn video off unless it's just, again, better without video. I would choose video off just to, um, to lower the, the demand on the computer and the connection. But that's up to you. If it's something you need or want to see their face, then turn it on and it'll force on. When they, they can always turn it on and so can the post as well after you're in the meeting. It'll just default as off, is that? Depending like, on how you set up your meeting, your meeting, once your settings are set the way you like them, will stay for your next meeting and so on and so on until you make changes to, okay. to these options. So you covered audio, so <laughs> Advanced meeting options. All right, if you would like your joining your participants to type in a password before joining your meeting, you can set that up. Uh, it is a large password. It would be, I think it's at least 10 characters, upper, lowercase, symbol, number. Um, and then you can also enable before you post, which allows participants to join the meeting without you. That's hugely helpful, especially if you schedule a meeting with a lot of people, you're the, the host of the meeting, and then you're out sick or whatever. Correct. If that's If that's checked, the meeting will go on anyway. You don't have to be the host. And there's also an alternative host as well that you can add someone to be your alternate host if you know you're not going to be in a meeting. Um, mute participants on entry. This way when they come in, you don't get like that large thumb or high-pitched microphone and they can unmute themselves as well as the host can also unmute them. Um, you can also change your meeting ID if you don't like the one that they assigned you. You can create your own and then send that out to participants. You can also set up the meeting to record automatically when the meeting starts, or you can uncheck that and record the meeting when you're ready to start recording. Um, if someone gives you scheduling privileges, you can also schedule for a person, and or if you give somebody scheduling privileges on your behalf, that's a deeper more advanced <coughs> portion of Zoom. And then I already spoke of the alternative posts. And then your calendar. The very bottom of the scheduling and meeting, you can select a calendar, either Outlook, Google Chrome, or other calendars. If you use another calendar, then you have to copy it to the clipboard or it will open with your default calendar if it is not Outlook. That's it. All right. All right. Thank you all. Any IT crowd fans? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it off yet. I'm going to be a little bit more visually oriented, so bear with me. So this is when you have started your meeting. And uh, you notice how the unmute and the straight video, well, they're currently muted, so I think that video is turned off. You can do that in the settings. I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. So to 
in order to do this, I could use the handy dandy pointer here. So once you get your session started, if you don't have anything uh, muted, that's fine. You can just click uh, mute and start video, and it'll cross it off for you. So you click on this arrow for your audio options, and here's your audio screen. Now I'm sure most of you when we're saying up here the da 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 sound. I hate that, but it is what it is. That's how you choose to, that's the, obviously where you're going to be testing your speakers. Uh, the computer or whatever device you're using is going to have different options for your sound. We typically like to use whatever the biggest sound output is. So in, in Gamble Room, for example, we'll use these two speakers here. Uh, and, but you can use uh, the computer speakers if you're in a smaller room. Sometimes that's better. For a microphone, um, any computer will have an onboard mic. We have, uh, I think Michael had two or three mics available for loan for meetings, and I think some of you, some of you who've been at the meetings recently have seen we have that, that cool little blue microphone, and also in 355 we have the, the, the little snowball. So pretty cool stuff, uh, much better sound quality than the older uh, microphones we would have used. So uh, this just helps the user here much better, and it just makes us look better too. Also with this I'll say, um, this is where if you have a headset and nothing comes out of the headset, this is where you would change that device. Zoom's pretty good. I would say I have most of the time if I plug a headset in, it's going to detect it and default to that, but not always. So this is exactly where you can come in. Yeah. Um, in this little area, yeah. both, both here for the speaker and here for the microphone. And, and it, it should, as long as everything's hooked in properly, uh, we'll list all of your devices and options. Uh, another thing to note as well, for your end, to cover your end too, and if you select this, in theory, it should save it every time you log in, but always mute the microphone when joining a meeting. There's nothing worse than joining a meeting and you carry on a conversation with somebody that's maybe colorful, <laughs> and they happen to hear it on the other end. Luckily, luckily it's never happened to me, but I've heard horror stories, so. All right, so we've done your audio, we're gonna do your video next. Um, so, a little bit of humor here. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, it's again, you can choose whatever camera you want to use. You can use your onboard camera for your, um, on your computer or your phone sometimes, or if you have a webcam, uh, you, or another camera that's compatible with a PC. Uh, so you would select that there. Uh, usually, so enable mirror effect is something that kind of may or may not be selected. That's a personal preference. But just the, the person who's looking at you is not going to see you as you are. It's like you're, they're looking into a mirror. If you have things you're trying to present to people in the background, they will be flipped if you do not have enable mirror effect. So you want to make sure it's enabled. Uh, kind of banking off of what Michael said, uh, there's an HD feature here. If you notice any lag going on or if there, there's a, somebody's complaining about not seeing your video properly, or is maybe too choppy, you can disable the uh, My Video, uh, enable HD, and that will allow you uh, just to, it, it kind of dumbs down the, the, the quality a little bit, but it, it shouldn't make your, your presentation as choppy. So everything, oh, and I'll, 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 before I forget to, uh, turn off My Video when joining the meeting. So you don't want to go live until you're absolutely 100% ready. So just very important, make sure that you cover yourself. You want to look as professional as possible. Not that you don't already, but when it comes to technology, just make sure that when you uh, are ready for your meeting, you are ready to rock and roll. So this is what your screen would look like while during the meeting. Everything's unmuted, you hopefully have the right audio settings, and you will have a, a good meeting. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly talk about uh, screen sharing. Um, this is new to me because I just talked to Michael about it yesterday and I cheated a little bit and put a little video in so I think the video will, will explain, explain it better than me so we'll take a quick look and then we'll go over it. In this video, you'll learn how to share your screen within a Zoom meeting. Simply select Share Screen at the bottom of your Zoom meeting window. From here, you'll be given various options such as sharing your full desktop or individual applications. To share your computer sound with others, simply select the checkbox for Share Computer Sound and then select Share Screen. Once content sharing begins, you can always select Stop Share to stop sharing your screen with others at any time. So, I mean, it's, it's 
I'll just go through it with the video did, but basically you open the Zoom app and you click new meeting. And after that, you get down here where it says uh, share screen. And this is, <laughs> this gets a little confusing because it's kind of, it has like all your apps and everything that you have open on your um, on your computer. So on mine, I, I picked the PowerPoint presentation so you can kind of click on it. If you see where the arrow is, it's kind of hard to read, but it says, I believe, uh, share or stop share. That's if you want to stop it. But that's, that's how you share an app uh, from your desktop. When you hit share, when they hit the share button at the bottom, it's going to give you every option that it sees. Yeah. It's kind of confusing, to be completely honest. Screen one and screen two is if you have two monitors, and it'll let you choose one monitor or the other, which is kind of a nice feature, because if you do that, you can focus everything on one monitor and still have the other monitor for your email or whatever you might be. What I found is that inevitably, choosing the application you want to share is the best option. The only disadvantage to it is if you have a PowerPoint, let's say you're talking about a form you're developing and you have a PowerPoint <coughs> and you have the form and you want to go back and forth between the two. You do have to stop sharing, come back, share, and choose the other application. I'm not aware of at this point an easy way to toggle back and forth. That may be the one time you want to choose a screen and then anything you show on the screen, it'll just go back and forth. So, so if you chose screen one, it would just it'll go with you best. and it would do whatever. Yeah, because yeah, I've had that problem a lot. I'd go from one thing to another and, and people say, no, I'm still seeing your PowerPoint, not. Yes. So if you do screen one, okay. Yep. Yeah. So okay. that's, it, that's an, especially if you were dealing with like three word documents and a PowerPoint, Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. If you're flipping between things, I would absolutely designate okay. a screen. If you have a laptop, you're only going to have one screen. But if you're at your desk and you usually have two screens, and I do like because your computer has named your screens one, two, three, whatever many you have. And so that doesn't always make sense, but it'll show you what's on the screen presently. So it's usually pretty easy to identify which screen you should use. If you are if you are changing applications on a regular basis, I absolutely recommend that you choose one of your screens. Generally, oh, no, no, it's okay. <laughs> generally, I choose the one that is not my main screen. And this is the second part that I would tag onto what Mario said. Yes. If you choose the screen, and I've seen not the, not this example, but I've seen some pretty negative things. If you choose it and it happens to be the screen that your email is sending notifications to, <laughs> I've seen some, some things that should not have been shared. <laughs> or just turn off your email before me. Absolutely. <laughs> That's exactly right. That I was going to say that I, when I was doing this for, you know, for this, uh, the more things you could have closed so it doesn't look like that. <laughs> you don't really want it to look like that. That's a little too much. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? I, it's a little too busy. <laughs> the advantage to sharing, like Mario in this example chose the PowerPoint, you could choose Word. The advantage to sharing that is no notifications show up unless they're part of that application. I was in a meeting that was 20 people, and the director of HR for the district had an email came up that said, oh yeah, we got to get rid of so-and-so. <gasps> oh, oh, no. oh, no. <laughs> And the subject was, you know, employee, whatever, and then, but the first line was like a response. Yes. Don't be that person. No, the person was not doing that. <laughs> Actually, the person was already out of the district, so I mean, from that standpoint, they were out, but they weren't terminated. So it was kind of the final, yeah, we're going to do this. But yeah, there were 20 of us in the meeting, and it was like, I mean, it was dead silent. Dead silent. So, I, so, so for obvious reasons, I asked Michael yesterday, you know, someone could zoom in and see my screen. What, what, why do I need to share my screen? Well, if you look at my mug in number one, <laughs> that, it, computer it, did yeah, it, it puts it right to what you're looking at, obviously. So. And Jennifer's example is, is the one time that I would say that it's, it's beneficial to share your screen because it's really 
to share a screen instead of an application. It's really easy to lose track. You're focusing on the presentation. You're not focusing on the software. Okay, so I got a question. So did I not word that right? Choose yeah. option and then or, or app? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, I didn't know. If, <laughs> no, if you open up an app, is it a totally different thing that comes up? No, it looks, so basically what's happening is the screen is, it's rendering what's on your screen and sending it out as a signal to the other person and Zoom okay, interprets so it. Okay. it. The advantage is screen is better if you're flipping through a bunch of applications and or documents, but turn off your email. Um, application is better because if you're just showing a PowerPoint and you're talking, um, the leadership meeting the other day, that's what happened, it was a PowerPoint and the facilitator went through it. And, and that's, I've done that so many times. And Zoom is a, so I've used Skype a lot too. I'm real familiar with that. Um, Zoom just does this a little bit better than Skype does. There's a whole bunch of things that I like better about Zoom. Okay, any questions about this? How many of you have shared just an application instead of the whole screen? How many of you have shared a whole screen? Okay. So be aware of that. That's a really useful tip. Um, and it's not any more difficult than um, sharing the screen. You just kind of have to look for the, oh, the one caveat, the, the application has to be open when you share the screen. So if you're going to launch it and then launch PowerPoint, then um, it's not going to help you. Okay. How many of you know the difference between the web application and the client? The first thing I'm going to say is, hands down, there is a difference, and hands down, you want to use the full client. It is such an easy install. The only time, for us, if you haven't installed it, we will come do it for you, no problem. It is, I mean, it'll take us longer to walk to where you are than it will for us to install it. It tends to do well, even in environments where you don't have admin rights. Not always, but it tends to do well. So when you have people that are outside the university using it, I do strongly encourage you to tell them to download the client. If they can't, that would be the one time to use the web client, is if some, especially someone outside the university. Um, is it's on the image by default, right? Of course, not every, so. not every department yeah. uses the image. But um, if they're outside and they can't install the client, then hands down, have them use Google Chrome, and here's why. So lots of information, I don't expect you to understand all of it, or to be able to read all of it, but you can see that the only one that has everything checked with no asterisks, um, oh, Ed, Edge does too at this point, oh no, it has an asterisk, is Chrome. <laughs> so if you're gonna do it, use Google Chrome. It enables more of the same features as the client. Yes? How do you know if they're a client if you test it before or if they're like, let's zoom? That'll help you. Okay. It, you will not be in a web browser. Mm -hmm. At the bottom of your screen will be a blue icon. We can, believe it or not, we intentionally didn't install it on this one in case anyone had a question on how to install it. Um, but you will have this screen. I, there it is. I can Thanks. tell you if you okay. want to play. Can I interject? Oh, yes. I would say if you want to play, because I probably, out of the three of us, I was probably the least one that did this. Um, the client is a great, just practice a little bit. It's pretty, it's not bad. It's pretty easy. We can send My a experience. Link. We can send a link. Zoom actually has a test room. It's just a web camera set up in a room. But it'll, it'll let you play with no consequence. That's what the client looks like. Yep. If you got a machine, if you've gotten a machine in the last two years, is that about right, Andrew? Mm -hmm. This is installed by default. I'm going to show you in a second. The, also, if you got upgraded to Windows 10. Yes. Basically, if we've touched your machine and like installed, reinstalled your machine, a new machine, um, it'll be on the image. Yeah. If it's not, we will come help you. And just for clarification purposes, this is it's different from when you sign in under your SSO because that still prompts the, cl the, uh, the client to kick in. Single sign-on right. is SSO. So, you, so common practice would be 
can still sign in with SSO, but that triggers the client. I think you have to when you open the client. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. When you launch a client, it's going to ask. It's going to take you to a web page and ask you to sign in. So this is confusing. <laughs> so you're going to sign in the first time, and it's going to say, "Oh, you haven't signed in." It's going to send you out to your default web app, a web browser. Mm -hmm. It's going to ask you to sign in. Net ID. Net ID. I was going to say, Net I'm ID. pretty sure it's still Net ID. We're probably they keep saying, they've been saying since I got here two years ago almost, that 18 months from now, net ID will be gone. Oh. So we'll see. Um, but it yeah, takes you out, months. you put in whatever your net ID is, um, and then we'll bring you back to the application. The big, big thing that you're going to see is when you come in, when you launch a meeting, it's going to ask you to, it'll either launch to meet from the, if you have the client defaulted, it'll go take you straight to the client like we saw on Stephanie's machine. If not, it's going to ask, and this is really important for people outside the university, yes. tell you to download and run Zoom. Again, I've used Skype. I've used Apple's products. Um, Apple's, of course, are already pre-installed most of the time. But uh, hands down, Zoom is the best about this download and run. It's, you click that, it's going to download it. It generally will bring the person right back in. Um, if they don't have a Zoom account, I think it does prompt for them to create one, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, it, it works really well. What I think a lot of people do is this, that run from your browser. You don't want to do that. That is the single biggest thing I found in talking to people, because I just naturally used the client, because Skype, the web client, was horrendous for years. And so I got used to using the client. Um, it's actually better now, but I, I much prefer this product. And then if you're in the web browser, this is more of what it looks like. This is going through showing you. The big difference is across the top is going to be Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, Firefox. You're going to know you're in a web browser. I strongly recommend you know. It still lets you share your screen, but you'll see it doesn't have as many options. If you don't know the difference, one of us can come and sit with you and take two minutes to make sure you're using the client, not the web. But if you look at the top of your screen and you see, like right up above where this is, and you see Firefox or you see Chrome, you're using the web version. You should call us.